things have matured. The market has really sped up and iterated a lot. So if you have an undifferentiated product and you're trying to bring that to the marketplace, you're going to have a bad time. Basically, <laughs> you need something special that's going to help you stand out. Yeah. You need some kind of moat around mm -hmm. the business that makes it unique. And that could be something mm -hmm. like brand. It could be something like innovations that you bring to the table because let's say you have 15 years of experience in injection molding and you make a better widget than anyone else because you have mm. a factory and you figured it out. There's many ways to mm. have advantages. There's all kinds of ways to get an edge. But if you're just going to have an undifferentiated product, there's only so much that we at Pathfinder or any agency can do with advertising that's going to help you truly stand out. You'll get more eyeballs and attention, but the next step for Amazon and any kind of e-commerce platform is the conversion, right? So people can look at your thing, but they can ultimately decide hey, I clicked on this ad, but this is not for me because there's five other options and one of them is $2 cheaper. Welcome to Super Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Shahid Durrani. Today we have with us Brent Zaradnik. Brent is the founder and CEO of AMZ Pathfinder, an Amazon advertising agency that works with brands to optimize their advertising presence on Amazon, increase conversion rates with content optimization. We're going to get right into this, Brent. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> on our show. Yeah, no problem. It's been great getting to know you in the past couple of minutes here. I'm really excited for you. I see we are, Brett. Can you tell us more about the marketplace when it comes to advertising on Amazon? How is it different than advertising on Facebook, for example, or sure. YouTube or Google? Sure. So people know those other names you mentioned because those are like mm -hmm. the yeah. 800 pound gorillas, the colossal giants of the advertising yeah. world, at least in North America, what we think of in Canada, mm -hmm. US, and of course, Mexico mm -hmm. and other places. But Amazon has its own retail advertising network. And it's been around since roughly 2014. That's like when it first started. And what does retail advertising mean? It's like within the context of a retail environment, whether that's online retail or physical retail, there's ads that are shown to shoppers and customers. Now, the mm -hmm. difference with Amazon, I think that is different from a Kroger or a, what's the chain you guys have in Canada? Shoppers? Is that one? Uh, like shoppers, a yes. Shoppers, yep. yeah, like a grocery mm -hmm. store or something. The difference is that Amazon knows what people's profiles are like. So you have an Amazon account, you have maybe years of order history, you have a lot of information, and Amazon can do more advanced marketing to you as a shopper based on that psychographic profile and history. We're getting pretty technical here already. <laughs> but, but it's like an algorithm, right? It's yeah, an algorithm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And most of the advertising that we do for clients we work with is PPC. So it's like search-based. Someone's expressing an intent to buy something. Yeah. And so I you're intend. marketing yeah. to them based on those keywords. Mm -hmm. There's many other mm -hmm. ways to do it on Amazon these days because it's evolved really rapidly over the past, I would say, three or four years. Amazon's really poured gasoline on the fire. But yeah, that, that's pretty much the gist. Good. Yeah, that's good, though. Basically, the main component of advertising on Amazon would be the content specifically that gets you on a higher point when it comes to the ideal people that may be interested in that mm -hmm. product to show it to them? Is it the content or I guess it's a mix of their behavior on Amazon and the product that they're promoting? Yeah, that's more aligned with what the reality is on the marketplace on Amazon these days. Yeah. So it's like, think about what is advertising? It's like talking to the right person at the right moment yeah. when they're looking mm -hmm. to do something. So that's why Google has made billions off of PC advertising because people are expressing intent to find something out or to go to a movie mm -hmm. or to buy something. With Amazon, it's primarily buying stuff because it's like one of the biggest e-commerce marketplaces in North America and now increasingly like Europe and other places too. So uh -huh. what you're doing is like meeting a shopper at that nexus, at that point when they're looking to buy something and when the product is available. So what you're doing is paying for exposure to relevant people. And that is, I think, a model that's not going to go away. How it expresses itself is variable, right? That can happen in any number of ways. But the way that we're primarily mm -hmm. focused on with Amazon advertising is like keyword. Uh, keyword mm. based. Yeah. Keyword based. The professionals, when they're launching a product on Amazon, they do their research on products that might be similar. They Absolutely. check, yeah, they check how they're doing and the numbers, their ranking, the basically 
their success and they may make that product or they make it better and then they launch it and then they, they work on getting the ratings, the reviews. So what happens when someone searches for a product like that and three or four similar items show up in the list? What do you do to help your clients get that sale? Is there something, is there some secret or some kind of sauce that you could share? That well, you do the help first of all, let me back up because it sounds like a good deal about Amazon already. <laughs> Based yeah, on what I, you just I said. Got, <laughs> yeah, I got cheated. That's why. Uh, so. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So I wanted to add that as a source of income and I hired someone on Upwork. I had a really good ratings. Like I do yeah. my research. I've been working on Upwork for many years and mm -hmm. overall have a great experience. Yeah, me too. But, I hired someone yeah, there really. just recently to do a yeah. single task. Yeah, that's They're one really thing you, you might have to be careful of. There are some hucksters out there in the Amazon space that are trying to sell the dream right. is what I call it. But yeah, but Brent, yeah. I honestly, till this day, I still don't believe that guy would do intentionally. Like I honestly, mm -hmm. when I talked to this guy, like I connected so well with him. I'm really good connecting energies and he just disappeared. They tried yeah. to contact him. He just took a lot of money. I think about four or 5,000 and. Yeah. He just disappeared until now. He's just gone. But I learned well, so much from him. If it makes you feel any better, I've made more expensive mm. mistakes than that in my life. <laughs> oh, me too. Overall, I did. Yeah, that was just the Amazon one. Yeah, that's yeah. just one, one of several. Yeah, just but, one of them. Yeah. yeah that, those are part of the bumps you get in entrepreneurship. Yeah, of course. I'm sure it's, it's a theme that's been on this show. Success tax. For sure. yeah. Success tax. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Or you can think of it as a very expensive online course. So to back up, it's true that Amazon... Let's say the, the heyday of Amazon when it was FBA or fulfilled by Amazon, private labeling. Mm. I'm using air quotes mm -hmm. there. Like that heyday mm. was like 2015, 16, 17, maybe into 2008. Things have mm. evolved much faster. Things have matured. The market has really sped up and iterated a lot. So if you have an undifferentiated product and you're trying to bring that to the marketplace, you're going to have a bad time. Basically, <laughs> you need something special that's going to help you stand out. Yeah. You need some kind of moat around mm. the business that makes it unique. And that could be something mm -hmm. like brand. It could be something like innovations that you bring to the table because let's say you have 15 years of experience in injection molding and you make a better widget than anyone else because you have mm -hmm. a factory and you've figured it out. There's many ways to mm -hmm. have advantages. I know someone yeah. that is a, an ex R doctor, like professional MD, and he partnered with a company and they do supplements and he brings his medical expertise to it. And oh. you know, that, that's, that's their advantage. She's like an ER mm -hmm. doctor for 10 years. So knows a mm -hmm. lot. There's all kinds of ways to get an edge. But if you're just going to have an undifferentiated product there's only so much that we at Pathfinder or any agency can do with advertising that's going to help you truly stand out. You'll get more eyeballs and attention, but the next step for Amazon and any kind of e-com platform is the conversion, right? So people can look at your thing, but they can ultimately decide, hey, I clicked on this ad, but this is not for me because there's five other options and one of them is $2 cheaper. They look the same. What do I have to lose? I'll go buy that one. So you need mm -hmm. something to convince people to ultimately convert and stay and become a customer. So that, that would be my kind of hardball answer to your question, yeah, if you will. Yeah. So basically just don't take on anyone with a dream. Yeah. You actually analyze what they have to, to make sure if it'll be a success. Yeah. Account right. audits, product audits, and having conversations with Amazon brands or Amazon business owners about what's the direction of this company? What do you bring to the table that's unique and different? What's your strategy for this? What's your one three-year plan? Those mm -hmm. conversations definitely help us when we're, let's say, vetting clients or talking to potential prospects and stuff. But yeah. those are questions that anybody should be asking themselves in the e-commerce world, yeah, not just Amazon course. sellers. You need yeah. to be able to stand out because anyone can spin up a yeah. Shopify store in business. these days. Yeah, generally, yeah, for sure. Now, you pick this niche, right? You're like, it's a, a niche that you're in for the advertising part of it. And there's a lot yep. of companies or agencies that do pretty much everything when it comes to Amazon. They'll do the research, they'll find the product, they'll find the sourcing, blah, blah, blah. And you specifically are just working on this one niche. Is there a reason behind it? And is there a story behind it, a reason behind mm -hmm. why you're only specifically? I understand having a niche is a lot better when you're trying to penetrate a market. Yes. But I'm just curious to understand your thoughts behind going into that niche. Yeah, sure. There's actually so many angles to this. I think we can spend a good deal about a time on this, but I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to spend the rest of the episode. Let's yeah. just say there, there's a famous quote, you know, who Seth Godin is the author, marketer. No. Oh, he's an American author. He's written a lot of books about marketing, Purple Cow. Okay. What's the other one? Lynchpin. 
I've read several of his books, but he has a phrase that he wrote somewhere on his blog years ago, which is be a meaningful specific is the idea. So you have to be something that sticks out to people mm, and that they yes. see and they say, oh, this, this is for it. me. Maybe it's not for everybody, but this is for me. And mm. I think also the second part of that is that businesses, I think, are a reflection of the founders when they're a certain size. Obviously, when they get big, that changes. Many more people get involved. But for many years, Pathfinder was me and four other people, or we were 12 people at one point. We're 20 now. We've been bigger in the past. We've scaled down post-COVID because COVID was actually, strangely enough, like very good for us, very good mm. for a lot of Amazon businesses, Yeah, which is a story for another day. But essentially, the idea there is my strengths and my background is online advertising. I worked in Google Ads for years before I got okay. to Amazon. Mm. I, I saw the skill set I had there overlap with this opportunity with Amazon. And yet again, it's that kind of idea. It's like the nexus of these two things and the cross of those two things. And that's where I thought the value was. That's mm. Those are the two big reasons. Let's be specific. Let's stake, put our stake in the ground and say, this is what we do. If someone says, I want this and this, I want everything from the whole Apple cart. We only do three or four of those things. So we can help you with those. And we're really yeah. good at them. But those other things, yeah, we'll refer you to a business partner, we'll refer you to a company that we have a referral agreement with, or we'll just tell you to go someone we don't even, who doesn't even know we exist, but we know they do good work. So yeah. we do that constantly. And so the things awesome. that we do are really focused around advertising in a cluster of services that are help the impact of advertising be greater. So that's the, mm -hmm. that's the hypothesis, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That's great, Brent. And it's mm -hmm. the passion, right? You have passion mm -hmm. in it. And yes. that passion dictates the success as well when you're working in any kind of niche. Your comfort level and your experience, your knowledge, your passion, it only makes sense to go in that route. That's it great. It carries you through so, those late nights and early mornings and all those inevitable long days you might have in, in the kind yeah. of the course of entrepreneurship that you're going you're gonna to encounter. Can you share some common mistakes or misconceptions when it comes to Amazon advertising and how it can help? someone that is looking to branch off on Amazon? Yeah, that's a great question. Common mistakes. I think people don't spend enough time in their accounts, like doing their routine checking and auditing of the account. Like someone will set data up a campaign. Analyzing. Yeah, just simple stuff though. It doesn't have to be so complicated. Oh, I need to hire a data analytics expert or we need a no, database yeah. guy. But if you just do just something that's flash. Like, yeah, every week spend 45 minutes on a Monday doing X, Y, and Z. And if you just consistently apply that over a period of time, you're going to have better results. And you can do that mm -hmm. if you're spending a couple thousand dollars a month on advertising, which is a pretty small budget, relatively speaking. But you can have great returns with that money if you consistently apply some sort of process for optimization and inspection and adjustment, let's call it. And a lot of people, mm. what they'll do is they'll see a podcast, they'll read a blog post, they'll get really excited about something, they'll hear about it at a conference. And they'll build out a bunch of campaigns and then they'll leave for two weeks and forget about it. And then they'll come back and go, oh God, I spent how much money? And what was their return? Oh, I don't want to look. <laughs> That's a common, I think, mistake that we see is just getting excited about the newest hot topics and then taking immediate hard action on it and then not following through. In reality, so many things in life are just about consistency and execution. And this is what mm. it's like for everything. Think about diet, exercise. It's consistency. Yeah, there's an analogy I heard once about, I think it was Kobe Bryant. It was like, he just worked on his footwork for basketball. I don't know much about basketball, but the idea is like, he didn't spend all day doing like fancy trick shots and stuff. He just was all about his footwork and would practice that. And that was such a, the foundation for everything else. And for PC, a lot of it is just consistency, actually. Just have a schedule and stick to it. Wonderful. Man, I love this stuff because what you guys are doing is you're helping people create a business, increase their income. And then there's so oh, yeah. many people that are involved in all that. The money that comes into the business, there's staff, there's people, and then the people that are purchasing, they're finding the right product. So the work you're doing is important. And without advertising, it will be pretty much impossible, right, on Amazon? Well, that's an interesting question, man, because mm. if you look back in the annals of history and you look at quotes from Bezos himself, of course, Jeff Bezos, the original mm -hmm. CEO, founder of Amazon. Yeah. They have a thing from like 2009, which is like, advertising is a substitute for brands that have poor products and need something else to boost their visibility. Wow. And now years later, Amazon has changed their tune on that. They don't feel that yeah. way anymore. Obviously, no. it makes them a lot of revenue and it's a yeah. good growth sector for them. So you can get a bit cynical about it. But at the same time, there is a meritocracy with advertising. The way that most advertising, including Amazon, works is called like second, second past the highest bid bidding. There's a name for it. I forget at the moment. But basically, I'll bid a dollar forty-five Canadian 
and maybe you will bid a dollar fifty Canadian, but you will only pay a dollar forty six Canadian because you just have to beat me by a little bit. So you don't pay your max bid; you pay the one that's just above mine as the second bidder. And there are things that go into the auction model, like how relevant is the product, how relevant is the keyword, what's the conversion rate, what are the ratings like. But basically, like the products that convert the best and win the companies in Amazon the most money are the ones that are ultimately going to succeed in the ad auction. So there is some like merit to it as well. It's not always just a race to just who can pay the most, although in some extremely competitive areas that does happen. But yeah, we try to be like mission aligned with our clients and say, hey, these are a lot of them that we work with are like pretty small businesses. Some of them are family operations. Some of them are mid-sized companies, but we really enjoy the relationships we have with people at those companies. And then of course, my team, which is all remote, we're mostly here in Europe. We're just normal people, really. <laughs> just doing our best for the clients that we have. Yeah. And it, I find that running a business that way, it's so much more productive and effective when you just chill out a little bit and just be mm -hmm. human and just be real with people and just try to, your main focus is trying to help others. And when you do it that way, it relieves a lot of that stress and that pressure of, oh, I got to get this. I got to get this. Yeah. And you find the results are much easier too. I've never been about growth for growth's sake. There's a lot mm. of people, I know entrepreneurs and like, they're all about like blitz scaling and let's you know, yeah. get as many people as we fast as we can. I guess my kind of story with Pathfinder has been like a slow and steady, slow and steady kind of hmm. growth. And that's fine. That's, I think yeah. that delivers good results for our clients. So that makes me happy. That makes them happy. So we try well, to this find is, some alignment there. Yeah. You know, this is great that you're going on podcasts because it's the best way to get in the right people's ears and share your voice because every single mm -hmm. one of us is unique and your service is one thing, but people still want to do business with the person. I agree. And that's why I think so many like things are popular on social media. People like they might recognize a brand like Coca-Cola or Nike or something like that, like a huge company. But when it comes to mm -hmm. most companies, they want to understand like who the principal is, who's the yes. person leading that company or who's the person managing yeah. my account. And so yes. communication is probably like one of the biggest things that we've tried to push over the years because a lot of agencies are out there now. There's tons of them. Even we are worried, okay, what's a differentiation with our service? Seems like a theme for this podcast, but like, how do we yeah. bring something different to the table? And a lot of times that's, oh, yeah. we build a relationship where like, we're in touch with you a lot and we understand your business needs and we'll ask you about the vacation you just went on or like how your kids are doing or whatever. I had a client once ask me to climb Mount Everest with him, not even joking. Like he was totally serious because nice. he was planning a trip and I was like, I think I'm good. Like I like cycling. I'm in pretty good shape. Yeah. But I'm not gonna. I'm Can not I take gonna my bikes? Everest. Yeah, can yeah. I hold my bike up there and maybe ride it down? Uh, definitely not gonna climb Everest, man. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's all about relationship. At the end of the day, relationship. What they create is they create that trust, and it's just natural to end up doing business as well, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's what I yeah. find at conferences too. One thing I say mm -hmm. I like about the Amazon space is it's still kind of like a cottage industry. There's a lot of software tools that are out there. And most of these software tools are created by people who are Amazon brand owners or sellers themselves. And so they mm -hmm. have an itch they wanted to scratch. They're already <laughs> entrepreneurs. They already have a business. So they started something to help them in that business. And then in some cases, those tools have become tools that are like multi-million, in some cases, like billion dollar tools that are now massive. But it grew pretty organically. And the same is true for the ad tools that we use and like people in the space that I know that have companies. It, and we all kind of know each other to a certain extent too. Like we bump into each other at conferences, like hang out. A lot of my competitors are technically competitors or some of my best friends that I've grown to be really, really close to over the years. Uh, and really. I think that just speaks to the way that people in the space do business. There's definitely people who are more hardcore, but that's just yeah. not my ethos. <laughs> no, that's good. Brent, yeah. I can relate to that. I don't feel there's any room for competition. There's so much abundance in our universes. We don't need to compete. We can work with each other. I call it hashtag let's grow together. Huh. And that is we just grow together. If somebody's going to come to me is meant to come to me. Someone's going to come to you is meant to come to you. There's no need for all that. We can right. work and grow together. Yeah, I agree. And the other thing to keep in mind is like the e-commerce pie is like mm. still growing because really, if you look at all commerce, it's like billions and billions. I think the last stat I saw was like online shopping is like at most 13% or 12%. And that's just in the continental US or the U.S. And that's obviously a country that has a high penetration of like internet usage and, and, and people who are comfortable with e-commerce. Places in the world that don't have that yet, I'll use Mexico as a good example. It's growing rapidly. It's one of the biggest potential markets. Most native Spanish speakers like anywhere in the world 
Uh, and then many people that come from other countries live in Mexico too. It's got a huge population, but e-commerce penetration there is like tiny, comparatively speaking. But more people are getting online, more people are getting credit cards, more people are comfortable with the idea of e-com. So like, we're only at the beginning of e-commerce. Yeah. It seems, oh no, Amazon's figured it all out. Hardly. There's so many companies out there that are going to eat Amazon's lunch. Amazon's the big dog now. Give it 10 years. We'll see. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, yeah we'll especially see. Especially with artificial intelligence. Yeah, right, I agree. So can you share with us in your experience, what's the top category to research if someone new is trying to penetrate the Amazon world? Oh, yeah. There's one that comes to mind right away, actually. So yeah. the category that's probably the most frequently jumped into by like newer sellers would be like home and kitchen. So just home and kitchen, which is actually a home broad category. Yeah. So that could be like stuff for home. your lawn outside, could be things for the Carpets. home. I think carpets might be in a different, actually, yeah, rugs. it depends, depends what kind of carpet. If you have a rug, uh, yeah, like I have the one under I'm thinking home, of, right? yeah, yeah, I'd be under home. But the one I'm thinking of in particular would be like a shower rug. If you step out of the shower, you want to put oh, your yeah, feet yeah, yeah. nice and soft and fluffy. Yeah, that's somewhat, I had a yeah. client for years that sold those. Super successful business. That's home and kitchen. Kitchen gadgets, like that's a big one. Those things are probably the category that's most accessible. Things that might be really difficult on Amazon would be like supplements, um, that would be high margin, but incredibly competitive, really cutthroat too. A lot of people doing some shady stuff in that area um, or something like industrial and scientific, which requires certifications and usually requires a lot of like chemical stuff you have to get cleared. Amazon mm. wants to see all kinds of papers. Like if you have anything that could be considered a pesticide, Amazon's going to make you do a million forms. So there's things that are higher barrier to entry, let's say. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. Can you share with us, Brent, what you feel your innermost superpower is that got you to this point in your life? Yeah, I think that it's probably not accepting narratives or no from people that are supposedly gatekeepers. So there's a lot of people mm -hmm. in your life, everyone's experienced this as you go through, and they tell you, no, you can't do this for X reason, mm -hmm. or no, you can't do that for this Naysayers. reason. Naysayers. Yeah, it's not that they're trying to be negative. It's just that they no, just see the their world experience. in a certain way. Exactly. Yeah. And they have a construct in their mind that says, well, this is how things work. And you must abide by the rules of this maze and go this way. But in actuality, yeah. life is just like an open, like blank tableau. You can really do whatever you want within the confines of don't hurt other people and don't ruin other people's mm -hmm. lives and stuff. Yeah, there, There's a book I read many years ago from Alexis Ohanian, actually, who's the one of the founders of Reddit. And it's called Without Their Permission. And it's basically this idea. It's like, who are the gatekeepers and why do we have to listen to them? What if we just didn't? <laughs> and so mm. it's a powerful concept because, yeah, persistence is another thing that I think entrepreneurs yeah. need. But just ignoring gatekeepers or people that say it's not possible yeah. because X. And you're like, actually, yeah. I think it is. Or I just don't consider that to be a struggle at all. I'm just going to proceed with what I'm yeah. doing and give it a shot. I think so, that's probably it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. And it is such a huge problem with people. Unfortunately, many people live their life based on other people's opinion. Like right, they, expectation. they don't even make a, yeah, they don't even make a decision unless the people that are important to them agree, which is so unfortunate because every human being has such phenomenal qualities mm -hmm. that they can create anything, but they just limit themselves based on other people's experience. Because like you mentioned, they don't mean bad. When they no. share their opinion. Oftentimes they're trying to they're, keep safe. You know, what they perceive yeah. as safe. Yeah. Yeah, because it's their experience or someone they know that they experience, but it does not dictate what that person could do. Yeah. Past doesn't dictate their future or other people's experience don't dictate. Even their own experiences in the past don't dictate what they can do in the future. So that's right. a really good point that you shared there, Brent. I appreciate you for coming on our show. Thank you so much for sharing that information. And it was great talking to you. Yeah, no problem. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Audience, thank you once again for joining us. You heard Brent. If you need help with getting your product sold more often on Amazon and you're looking to spend some money to get that boost, get in touch with Brent, see what they have to offer. There's experience that they can share that can yes. get you there and it's worth a conversation at the end of the day taking that step that first decision to just chit chat just see what it's all about there's nobody's holding anybody committed by just meeting with someone appreciate you guys helping us grow really appreciate it actually